Hello friends, I am Dr. Meena Sethi. Welcome to Sethi Botany Classes. This is third video of Funeria. In first video of Funeria, we have discussed morphology and anatomy of Funeria. In second video, we have discussed structure of sex organ, how fertilization occurs and lead to formation of zygote. Now this is the third video in which we will discuss how zygote develops into sporophyte, what is the structure of sporophyte, how sporophyte dehes open to liberate the spores, and how spores germinate to form gametophytic plant body. Now, this is the gametophyte of Phenaria. This is having central axis attached to substratum by means of rhizoids. And these are the leaves present on the main axis. And at the tip, leaves they are crowded. At this position, female sex organ, archegonia, is present. This we have discussed in the second video. So after fertilization, many archegonia are fertilized, but after fertilization, only one will develop into sporophyte. Now zygote, which is a diploid structure produced after fertilization, will undergo mitotic cell division, and this will form sporophyte. Sporophyte of funeria is differentiated into, uh, this is a sporophyte, which is present on the gametophyte. This is gametophyte. This part is sporophyte. Now this is attached to gametophyte by a region called as foot. So we can say sporophyte of an area is differentiated into foot and this elongated part, which is reddish brown in color. This is seta, which is carrying the capsule at its tip. And this part is called as capsule. And this part, which is present at the upper end of the capsule is called as operculum or cap. Now seta is carrying the capsule at the tip foot is attaching the sporophyte at the tip of the gametophytic plant body. And this will help in absorption of water and minerals and nutrients for the development of the sporophyte. Sometimes there are transfer cells which are increasing the absorption surface area and also helping in absorption of water and solutes. And this will travel through the seta by conducting tissue toward the capsule and here formation of spores will occur in the capsule. Now this part is called as capsule, which is present at the tip of the seta. Now this capsule part is having cap part. This cap part is called as operculum. Now this cap part is separated from the capsule part by a, you can say constriction called as rim. And above the rim is present annulus. This annulus is basically made up of thin walled cells, which marks the separation of upper column at the time of dehiscence. The thin walled cells of annulus are destructed, separating the upper cap like upper column, which drops off, thus exposing the peristome. So, annulus will help in separation of upper column or cap from the capsule for the liberation of the spores during dehiscence of the capsule. And this junction is called as the rim. And below the rim, this part is called as capsule. This whole part is capsule. The capsule has further region. This lower part is seta. And this part, which is expanding like this, this is called as apophysis. And this part is, which is the middle part, this is called as theca. This we will discuss in detail. Now, this young capsule is having green tissue. So this is green in color. But at maturity, this will turn yellow and orange. And as we have seen in the first figure, this is drooping downward. And this is having regions called as apophysis. This is apophysis part, like seta. This is seta. And this is expanding. Here it is expanding. And this, is, this part is called as apophysis. And this middle thick part is called as, <clears throat> this is called as theca. And this cap-like upper column part, topi, uh, you can say cap is called as upper column. Now, this is the basal part, uh, which we discussed that sporophyte of an area is differentiated into foot, seta, and capsule. Now, this part is the seta, uh, which is the lower part, which is carrying the capsule at its tip. Now, this capsule part is carrying at the tip of the seta. So, this zone, which is called as conducting strand, is present in the center and this is made up of thin walled cells, and this will help in conduction of water and minerals to the capsule. And this outermost layer, this is called as epidermis, which is also interrupted at places by means of stomatal opening. 
and inner two epidermis is present somewhat tissue uh, but main part is epidermis and conducting strand which is helping in the conduction of water and minerals now this expanding part like seta where seta is ending capsule part is expanding this is called as apophysis now this is the outermost layer in the apophysis which is interrupted at places by means of stomatal opening now this stomatal opening will help in gaseous exchange now, inner to epidermis is present a zone of parenchymatous cells which is rich in chloroplast so this is called as a chloroenchymatous tissue or we can also called as chlorophyllous cells which are rich in chloroplast helping in photosynthesis again central part will be conducting strand so this green zone of the capsule will make it autotrophic or you can say this can make its own food and this is also help in gaseous exchange because of the stomatal opening now this upper middle part is called as theca now this is the fertile zone of the capsule now you can see its structure this outermost uh, layer is called as epidermis and below epidermis are present uh, three four layers of tissue called as hypodermis because it is present below the epidermis so this is called as hypodermis the inner to hypodermis is present zone which is rich in chloroplast so this is chlorophyllous zone and inner to chlorophyllous zone this area is air sac here also this is air sac so this part is called as spore sac spore sac is the part which is having a sporogenous tissue the sporogenous tissue will later on differentiate into spore mother cell spore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form haploid spores and this area is spore sac because this is rich in spores so in capsule of an area elaters are absent only spores are present and all the spores they are of the same type so this condition is called as homosporous but they are present in a sac like structure so this is called as spore sac and in the center of theca is present again conducting strand which is a continuation from the seta then from the apophysis part so this is helping in conduction of water and minerals and above this theca part is present upper column part now this is again a uh, spore sac is being explained the central part if we cut the transfer section of the capsule and we will see this structure uh, first we have discussed longitudinal section of the capsule now this is the transfer section in the center is present columella surrounded by spore sac and spore sac are connected to the uh, chlorophyllous zone with the help of these bars or structures which are called as trabeculae or septa and this zone is green in color and this is helping in photosynthesis so then this zone is hypodermis which is present below the epidermis and this is the outermost zone this is called as epidermis now this whole zone is connected to the spore sac through the air cavity with the help of this trabeculae or septa which is which are connecting it now here we can see these are trabeculae or septa which are connecting this zone of outer toward epidermis hypodermis and chlorophyllous zone to the spore sac by these trabeculae and this is the epidermis showing stomatal opening for the gaseous exchange now this upper part is called as operculum uh, which is present above the rim rim is separating the theca from the operculum and rim after a, a distance of rim or annulus this operculum will be thrown off as we have already discussed that cells of annulus they are destroyed and they will help in the separation of the cap like operculum which will help in exposing the peristome teeth during the essence of the capsule for the liberation of the spores now these are peristome teeth which are present in two rings now this is the outer ring and we can also see inner ring also so this is the inner ring which is exposing the inner ring and outer ring and they are attached to a tissue central disc tissue parenchymatous in nature so these peristome teeth they also have thickenings they are ornamented uh, with thick transverse bars and these peristome teeth they are hygroscopic in nature hygroscopic teeth when water is available they they will swell up and when water is not available uh, they will dry up so what happens here when operculum is thrown off 
peristome teeth, they are exposed toward the outer side. Annulus is destroyed. Now, Sita will swing in the air because outer air is dry. So, uh, peristome teeth will dry up. When they will dry up, so spaces will be created and inner spores present inside the spore sac, they will come out through the slits which are created in the peristome teeth because this operculum has been thrown off. Peristome teeth are exposed. They are hygroscopic in nature. They will dry up. Slits will be produced. This annulus will degenerate and tissue will also start degenerating. Only in the cavities, uh, spores will be found. Now, ultimately, spores will be liberated and capsule will dis open and liberate the spores in the external environment and spores they will fall on the substratum and when conditions they are favorable now these spores will germinate now what is the structure of the spore now this is bounded by thick wall called as exine the inner wall is called as entine now this is cytoplasm and this is nucleus and spore may have certain reserve food material so when this falls on the substratum this will absorb water its cytoplasm will swell up and through the thin area, which is called as entine, a tube will come out. This is called as germ tube. Now this nucleus, because spore mother cell has undergone meiosis to form four haploid spores. So all the spores, they are of same type, homosporous condition. So this nucleus is haploid. So when this will form germ tube, all the nuclei present in it will undergo mitotic cell division and septa will be produced in this germ tube. And you can see uh, from another side also, a germ tube is being produced. Now this germ tube is turning brown in color. This is not developing green color. So this will help in formation of rhizoidal germ tube or rhizoids. And this part is turning green in color. This is developing the chloroplast. So this will be helping in photosynthesis. So ultimately when spore is germinating, now this chloronemal branches, which are developing chloroplast, they will turn autotrophic in nature more multiplication will take place, more cell division will occur. And ultimately, there is formation of a structure. This is called as protonema. Now, this is the spore showing germination. So these are the germ tube which are further dividing, developing chlorophyll. And this whole area is made up of chloronemal branches. And lower part is developing into rhizoidal branches. Now, they will fix the protonema to the soil. And rhizoid will absorb water and minerals for the protonema. Because of its green color, this can carry out the function of photosynthesis. So protonema is independent plant body. This is because this is being produced from the spore of a spore germination. Spore is haploid. So protonema is also haploid. So protonema is also called gametophyte of the phenaria. Now this protonema will bear buds. Now these buds are made up of two four cells with apical cell at the tip. Now, these buds will develop into young plant of phenaria, or we can say gametophore of phenaria. Because on one protonema, many buds, they are uh, found. Uh, when many buds are found on one protonema, so all the buds will develop into the young plant of phenaria. So phenaria plant, they grows in tufts because uh, all the buds will develop on one protonema. All the plants will be growing together, so they will be growing in the cluster. Now, the secondary protonema and gamma is the mode of reproduction in Phenaria as a vegetative mode of reproduction. So this gametophytic plant body, which has been developed from this protonemal buds, now this will develop into young plant of Phenaria, which is called as gametophyte. Now this gametophyte of Phenaria will develop into a mature plant. And after developing into a mature plant, this will start bearing sex organ. So in life cycle of Phenaria, there are two gametophytic plant bodies young plant of phenaria and protonema and both will give rise to gametophyte gametophyte will then be later on bear sex organ and then it will undergo fertilization process zygote is produced zygote will form sporophyte sporophyte as we have discussed the structure of sporophyte this will help in production of the spores now spores will be liberated and when spores they will be liberated they will start germinating and after germination, they will again form gametophytic plant body. So sporophyte has given rise to gametophyte. Gametophyte has given rise to sporophyte. So this is also called as alternation of generation. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please like, share, and subscribe.